So we just uh, mitomize him, please. So we're just about to start um, this case. So he's a 61-year-old lady, advanced glaucoma. She's got good vision, but um, advanced field loss. And the pressure is about 27. So this is just the, the mitomycin again. So again, so every time you touch the conge, uh, we want plain forceps. And you can see I'm making my incision with the vanners tangential to the limbus. So, so I, don't, I don't have any radial incisions. I'll just dry that for me. So I've got tooth forceps now, but I'm holding on the anterior edge, so I'm not at risk of tearing the, um, the uh, conjunctiva. So with my crescent knife, I'm going to sort of get the tissue plane and when I'm in the right place, I'm going to then uh, move the heel backwards and then follow the contour of the sclera. When I make the radial incisions, again, we're not going to go right up to the limbus because we don't want um, anterior drainage. So you can see that's quite a nice thick, thick flap. You know, ideally, a thick, we need a thick flap. And we're into clear cornea, so we know we're far enough forward. So I'm going to make my corneal grooves, and I'm going to make them at the end of the um, radial incision. So at the end of the radial incision, the groove, same on this side. Good. So I'm going to pre-place the releasable sutures. So reverse mount the needle. I'm just going to go nasal to the flap and then up into the groove that I've already made. Pull that through, and then keep all, you, it can, you can see it can be a bit of a mess with all the sutures, so I'm gonna move that to the side, and it just keeps it out of the way. Good, then forward mount the needle, in through the same groove, and up into the flap. So when I pull that, the, the loop gets buried in the corneal groove, so we can remove it easily if we need to. So I'm going to try and make this uh, partial thickness in the groove, and then we'll pull that through and then leave a short loop so we can tie the releasable. So the same on this side, temporal to the flap, through the groove, and then this end we lay, lay the suture over there. Made the loop there so that can be removed later. Partial thickness in the spiral flap and then out of the cor in the corner. And we've 
you've got the loop there to tie the releasable suture. Good. So, before you ever enter the eye, uh, paracentesis, so we can always refill the anterior chamber. And that's always a good, um, that's always a good thing that if the pressure preoperatively is very high, you can do a paracentesis and then wait a few minutes and just, just slow rele slowly release some fluid, some aqueous, to reduce the pressure before you make the sclerostomy. Good, so we, we can see clear cornea, so we're going to make the full thickness incision. And then one bite with the Kelly punch is enough. And then the redectomy. You always get a little bit of iris tissue coming through, so we'll just try and replace that. You've got to be a little bit careful when you do this if the eye is fake it. The pressure was quite high then, so that's why the iris prolapsed. I think uh, time for us. I think we'll just tie one of these sutures first, just so we we're closing the eye a little bit. And then it will be easier, I think, to replace the iris. Very so you can see the small loop here is we're yeah. going to tie that on four throws. One, two, three, four. When there's a lot of iris coming out, yeah. I want to make sure that the eyes are secure as possible, really, just in case anything else comes out. So I just want to at least tie one of these sutures. So I'm just going to tie the other suture as well. So you can see the pupil's becoming back to its normal round shape now. There's no drainage there, but we just need to make sure there's no iris blocking it. Good, so the pupil's completely round now. And if we test the, um, the flap, so it's completely dry. So there's no drainage there. And so what we'll do now is see if we can, you know, by just burping it, pressing here, whether there's any drainage. There we are. Yeah. And with very gentle pressure, it drains. So that's uh -huh. what we're trying to look for. A dry field, but drains with gentle pressure. So just to make the point that for a routine trabeculectomy, uh, we use just as a routine two releasable sutures. If you've got high risk cases, and the, what I mean of high risk, young patients, high myopes, normal tension glaucoma, as a routine, we use three releasable sutures at least. And that's because even if the, there doesn't seem to be any drainage on the table, they tend to, a week later, tend to suddenly overdrain and become hypotenuse. So leaving um, three releasables is much safer.
Good, so we'll, we'll do the purse string suture. So, um, scleral bite, and then we'll do our purse string. So, so we're on the inside of the conch, so we come inside to out. Then we go, we're on the outside of the conch, so outside to in, inside to out. And you can see I'm just doing this just at the edge of the conjunctiva. And then the final one is outside to in, so the knot's on the inside. Good. So to the nasal side now, so nice bite of the sclera, outside to the conch, to inside, to out. So I'm pulling that so I've got a nice tight, watertight conge at the limbus. I'm trying as much as possible bury th cover the knots so it's more comfortable. And then finally we'll do the mattress suture. Sure, so there's a nice tight seal there at the limbus. So you can see we can just with gentle pressure yeah. the blood forms. So we know we'll be able to manipulate it postoperatively. Yeah.